Methemoglobinemia is a clinical condition characterized by an abnormal elevation of methemoglobin in the blood. Under normal physiological conditions, methemoglobin levels are maintained at 1-2% to of total hemoglobin. Pathophysiology Methemoglobin is a form of hemoglobin in which the iron in the heme group has been oxidized from the ferrous state, Fe2+, to the ferric state, Fe3+. This oxidation renders the hemoglobin molecule incapable of binding and transporting oxygen effectively. The presence of methemoglobin not only reduces oxygen carrying capacity, but also increases the oxygen affinity of the remaining functional hemoglobin, resulting in a left shift of the oxygen dissociation curve. This shift further impairs oxygen delivery to tissues, exacerbating tissue hypoxia. Under normal circumstances, there is a constant process of methemoglobin formation and reduction. The primary physiological mechanism for methemoglobin reduction is the cytochrome B5 reductase enzyme system, which utilizes NADH as a cofactor. This system efficiently maintains methemoglobin levels within the normal range of 1-2%. Etiology. Methemoglobinemia can be classified as congenital or acquired. Congenital methemoglobinemia includes cytochrome B5 reductase deficiency and hemoglobin M disease. Hemoglobin M is a rare genetic variant of hemoglobin. Acquired methemoglobinemia can be caused by various medications and substances, including nitrites and nitrates, local anesthetics such as benzocaine, lidocaine, and prilocaine, dapsone, aniline and its derivatives, chlorates, phenazopyridine, sulfonamides, environmental or occupational exposure to oxidizing agents, and dietary sources like well water with high nitrate content. It is worth noting that therapeutic induction of methemoglobinemia has been historically utilized in the management of cyanide poisoning. This approach involves administering amyl nitrite or sodium nitrite to induce methemoglobin formation which then binds cyanide to form cyanomethemoglobin. However, this method requires careful monitoring of methemoglobin levels to prevent excessive formation. Clinical Manifestations The clinical presentation of methemoglobinemia is primarily related to the degree of functional anemia and resultant tissue hypoxia. Symptoms may vary depending on the methemoglobin level and the patient's underlying health status. Individuals with pre-existing cardiac or respiratory conditions may experience symptoms at lower met hemoglobin levels. Key clinical features include 1. Cyanosis, often described as a chocolate brown or slate gray discoloration of the skin and mucous membranes. Notably, this cyanosis is relatively unresponsive to supplemental oxygen administration. 2. Symptoms of hypoxemia, dyspnea, tachypnea, headache, fatigue, and dizziness. 3. Signs of end-organ ischemia, chest pain, altered mental status, confusion, seizures, and coma in severe cases. 4. Cardiovascular effects, tachycardia, hypotension, and cardiac arrhythmias may occur, particularly in severe cases. It is important to note that patients may be asymptomatic, especially with lower levels of methemoglobin. The severity of symptoms generally correlates with the met hemoglobin level. 10 to 20% mild symptoms, often asymptomatic. 20 to 30% fatigue, dizziness, headache. 30 to 50% dyspnea, tachycardia. 50 to 70% altered mental status, seizures, coma. Greater than 70%. Severe hypoxic symptoms, high risk of mortality. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of methemoglobinemia can be challenging due to limitations in standard diagnostic tools. 1. Pulse oximetry. Standard pulse oximeters cannot accurately differentiate between oxyhemoglobin and methemoglobin. The SpO2 reading often plateaus around 80 to 85 percent, regardless of the actual methemoglobin level. 2. Arterial blood gas analysis. The calculated oxygen saturation on ABG may be falsely normal, as it is based on the partial pressure of dissolved oxygen rather than the actual oxygen content. 3. Cooximetry. This is the gold standard for diagnosing and quantifying methemoglobin levels. 
It uses multiple wavelengths of light to directly measure different hemoglobin species. 4. Visual inspection of blood. Methemoglobin-rich blood has a characteristic chocolate brown color that does not change with exposure to oxygen. Management. The management of methemoglobinemia depends on the severity of the condition and the underlying cause. 1. Identify and remove the offending agent or exposure. 2. Supportive care. Ensure adequate oxygenation and hemodynamic stability. 3. Methylene blue. This is the primary antidote for symptomatic methemoglobinemia. Methylene blue. Mechanism of action. Methylene blue acts as a cofactor for NADPH methemoglobin reductase, enhancing the reduction of methemoglobin to functional hemoglobin. Dosage. 1 to 2 mg per kilogram intravenously over 5 minutes. Effects are typically seen within 20 minutes. Repeated doses may be necessary. Indications of methylene blue include symptomatic patients with elevated methemoglobin levels or asymptomatic patients with methemoglobin levels greater than 25%. Methylene blue is contraindicated in patients with G6PD deficiency as methylene blue may cause hemolysis in these patients. Alternative treatments. Ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid may be used as an alternative reducing agent particularly in G6PD, deficient patients. However, its onset of action is slower compared to methylene blue. Exchange transfusion. Exchange transfusion can be considered in severe cases unresponsive to methylene blue or in G6PD, deficient patients. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy may be beneficial in severe cases, although evidence is limited. Monitoring. Regular assessment of met hemoglobin levels, clinical symptoms, and end organ function is essential during treatment. In conclusion, met hemoglobinemia is a potentially life threatening condition that requires prompt recognition and management. Understanding its pathophysiology, etiology, and clinical manifestations is crucial for healthcare professionals to ensure timely diagnosis and appropriate treatment. Methylene blue is the primary antidote for symptomatic methemoglobinemia. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.